Second Kings chapter 18. Thank you, Father. We bless those. Thank God for those who are watching us on live stream. We welcome you to true love in Jesus' name. This uh, text is talking about Hezekiah. Now, Charmaine preached about this, I think, a week or so ago. Amen. She talked about Hezekiah. She talked about the extended length of time that God was going to give to Hezekiah. So this message is, is really, um, it's going to encircle her message. Amen. God had been giving me a word about this for a minute, and I had been sitting on it and pregnant with it, and now he's allowing me to give birth to it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So um, and, and there's a lot of reading here. I'm not going to belabor you with all of that. Praise God. Reading is fundamental. So jot it down, and what you don't understand, the Holy Spirit will give it to you later. Amen. But in 2 Kings chapter 18, you have a situation to where God called Hezekiah to be king. Now, just to give you a little bit of history, amen, when Solomon was, when he died, the kingdom of Israel was split in two. So you had Israel, and then you had Judah. Right. Okay, remember what the Lord said, that there will always be a king coming out of Judah, right? The scepter will not depart from your house. And so we know Jesus came through the, tr the tribe of Judah, amen, the lion tribe. And so Hezekiah is of the tribe of Judah. He's a king from Judah, praise God. And so God raises him up at an early age, praise God. And he does some phenomenal things to the point that he began to please God's heart. And 2 Kings 18, verse 3, the Bible said he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. I call it according to all that David, his father, did. And then the Bible goes on and tells you some of the things that King Hezekiah did. Verse 4, he removed the high places. He broke down the images. He cut down the groves. And those of you who know your, um, again, if you know anything about Old Testament history, you know that when um, when there was an infirmity, a plague in the land, God told Moses to make a brazen serpent and put it up on a post, and everybody who looked at it would be healed. Well, don't you know the folks begin to worship this brazen serpent? And that's how folks do, right? God bless you with something, and then turn around and worship the thing instead of the God that created the thing. And so even Hezekiah came and tore that down, praise God, and because they began to burn incense, and they made an idol, they made a God out of it, praise the Lord. And so the Bible says in verse 5, he trusted in the God of Israel, amen, there was none like him among all the kings, even those that were before him. And the Bible says in verse 6, he began to, he, he, he drew so close to the Lord, he walked with the Lord as one. Amen. Now I want to give you some history because even in that, no matter how you try to serve God, no matter how you try to please God, God's heart, the devil comes. Yes. Right. You can't stop the enemy from coming. Uh -huh. Oh, but you can, you can control how much damage he does in your life. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay? So I want to give you some history uh, about Hezekiah. He was a man after God's own heart. He was one who would tear down pagan altars and, and would, would cause the people to return back to the Lord. The Bible says, amen, he, he, he kept the problem, the commandments of God, which were commanded by Moses. Verse 7, the Lord was with him and he prospered him. Amen. And wherever he went, amen, God was with him. And lo and behold, here comes the king of Assyria. Here you are doing everything you know to do right. You have torn down pagan altars. You have torn down generational curses. You have walked before the Lord as straight as you could. Amen. You've done everything you know to do. Praise God. And here comes the devil. And so this is what happens in Hezekiah's life. The topic of my message is he tried it. He tried it. Amen. And so now here comes the king of Assyria. His name is Sennacherib. And so Sennacherib was like this warring, amen, king of, of Assyria. And so here Hezekiah is serving the Lord and doing everything he knows to do. And here comes Sennacherib, amen, to confront his kingdom. Looking down at verse 13, amen, the Bible says in the 14th year of Hezekiah's reign, here comes Sennacherib. He came up against Hezekiah and came up against Judah. And so the, the king, so, so Hezekiah, and I want you to get this because even in you serving the Lord and even in, in you, you worshiping God, amen, you can still fail in your faith sometimes. Uh -huh. And so here's what happens with Hezekiah. Instead of Hezekiah taking the situation to God first, he thought he would do it on his own accord, out of his own strength. Uh -huh. And so Hezekiah thought he could buy off the enemy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He thought he could compromise. You can't compromise with the devil. Uh -huh. He's a liar. That's what he does. But Hezekiah thought, you know what? I'll just give him some money. Wow. I gave, the Bible said Hezekiah gave Sennacherib so much money, he gave him like 11 tons of silver and a ton of gold. Uh -huh. 
He went into the temple of God and took gold. What is later on in the scripture, he even took the gold out the door of the temple and gave it to the devil. You can't buy peace from a devil. You can't compromise. You got to cast them out. You got to do warfare. See, there's some things you can't talk about it. You got to be about it. There's some things you praise God. You just, Mark, let me tell you something. There's some things you're going to have to roll your sleeves up or wear your knees out to take the devil out. You can't buy your devil off. So Hezekiah, he tried it, amen. And so he thought that, you know what, if I give this king some, some money, if I give him some stuff, then maybe he'll leave me alone. Yeah, no. Well, they worked for a small season. But don't you know the enemy came back? Right. Because one thing about the devil, he won't ride in your car. He'll drive your car. So, so you can't compromise with him, praise the Lord. And so he came back. And this time when he came back, he met a man of prayer. Somebody missed that. The first time the enemy came, you struggled with that thing. And you even compromised. And you tried to work that thing out in your own flesh. And then you saw it didn't work. The next time the enemy came, he ran into a man of prayer. My God, there's about to be a different outcome. He tried it, though. So the Bible says, verse 15, Hezekiah gave him silver, everything in the house of the Lord. Listen, you can't relinquish your gifts. You can't let the enemies take your talents, praise God. You can't sell your soul. You can't give over your birthright. So anyway, the enemy came back. Let me try to find out where we are here. And so the enemy sends a letter to Hezekiah, a message through, his name was Roshika. Now this is over in verse 19. Oh, you got to love this. <laughs> My God. Don't you know the enemy trying to threaten your life like he's going to really do something? Don't you know who I am? Do you know who my father is? Oh, this is going to bless your life. So verse 19, and Rabshika says unto them, he said, go and tell Hezekiah that this is what the great king, the king of Assyria said. I want to read out the NLT because they just give you a little bit more room to it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you want to get a little bit more room. And so, so, so this is the New Living Translation, right? I had to print this thing off. Here's what it said. This is what the devil says to the man of God, to the people of God. He said, this is what the great king of Assyria says. What are you trusting in that makes you so confident? Mm -hmm. Do you think that mere words can substitute for military skill and strength? Mm -hmm. Who are you counting on that you have rebelled against me? Mm -hmm. What's happening here, and Charmaine, you're going to love this. <laughs> this was during a time when the word came for Hezekiah that he was going to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not only do you have a war in your kingdom, now you got a word from God that you're about to die. Yes. You understand? It, it, it's bad enough you got one thing. Yes. You, you're trying to deal with the mess right here. Now something that broke loose on the other side. Amen. And so that's why Hezekiah said, look, God, I cannot die here because the enemy is coming against my kingdom. Yes. My God, I've got to raise warriors up. i got to raise soldiers up. i got to make sure, amen, that my children are being able to stand next to line. I cannot You know you went for a breakthrough when you got hell on every side of your life. My gosh, you got the enemy fighting. Here comes God coming at you too. Where you going to run but to God in prayer? Lord Jesus. So all of this is happening during the same time. Here he gets a word, amen, about his life. God said, get your house in order. You're getting ready to die. Yes, yes. And then he's trying to deal with that. And he got grabbed sheik on the other side telling you, who is this God you're depending on? And, 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 and listen, he talks so much trash. I got to read this to you. I don't want to, I want to own some rest. I want you to hear it, praise God. He said, you are trusting in the Lord your God. He said, isn't he the one who was insulted by Hezekiah? Didn't Hezekiah tell, don't you know the devil will mark your movements and tell you what you're doing? How do you know I call down? I'm taking offers in my family line. What you doing watching me, devil? What you doing mocking my life? He said, aren't you, isn't Hezekiah the one who tore down the shrines and the altars? Isn't he the one? He said, I tell you what, come and make a bargain with me. Wow. Now see, we did that the first time. Come on. I gave you 11 tons of silver. I gave you a ton of gold. I even took stuff out the house of God to try to keep you from attacking my house. And that didn't work. So now it's a different strategy now. See, that thing didn't work. Now I'm going to have to take it to my father in prayer. Listen, and so he says, oh, my God, my God. He said, uh, so, so, he said, um, he said, I tell you what, strike a bargain with my master. 
master and I'll give you 2,000 horses if you got that many men to ride on. So then he began to mock him, right? He said, with your tiny army, how you, can you think of challenging even the weakest of my master's troops? Don't you know the devil will get in your face and talk trash about you with your tiny troop, your little small army, with your uneducated self, with your single mother self, with your lifting self, with your broke self. He'll get right in your face and talk trash about you. your tiny army. My God. My God. Now you know you got to make God mad. My, even if I got a tiny army, if God be with me, yes. he's more than a world against me. Yes. Moses had a lift and he tore Egypt upside down, praise God. Don't let the enemy tell you about your flaws, praise God. You, yeah, you talk about my flaws, let me tell you about my God. Who can use me in spite of me? Okay, I'm gonna show you a tiny army. Oh, oh this is gonna bless your life. My God. This is gonna bless your life. Hey, my God. Thank you, Father. He said, with your tiny army, how can you think of challenging even the weakest of my master's truth? He said, even if you get the help of Egypt, and he said, matter of fact, I've broken Pharaoh down so low, he's like a broke down stick. If you lean on him and a break, and you'll break with him. This devil was talking junk. Somebody say he tried it. Oh, he was talking junk. Oh, he was talking junk. He said, what's more? Do you think we have invaded your land without the Lord's direction? Now it's enough for you to talk about me. Uh -oh. Don't talk about my God. Now don't come fight words right now. You ever been in school? Right? You ever been in school and people talk about you? Your run down shoes, your soul, soul, soul. Yeah, fine. But your mama, your mama. Don't you talk about my mama? Do you know how many folks got suspended? Do you know how many folks got a racket? Amen. Hey, I'm part of case. Cause you talk about my mama. You can call my army tiny And you can call my friends broke down sticks But don't you talk about my God That's why David was so upset David said look I don't care what you say about Saul But don't you talk about the God of Israel yes, yes. My God today So he said uh, He said do you think This is what, this is what Rashika now The captain of, of the Syri Assyrian army He worked for Sennacherib He's a little messenger he's an errand boy Y'all got some imps, they're the errand boy. Y'all got some ain't got some errand boys. The devil said he wrote write you letters. He's sending you an inbox of emails, praise God. Oh, uh, y'all got some imps, don't you? They, they, not, they can't come to you, but they'll send stuff to you. My God, my God. They'll Facebook you. They ain't gonna say it to your face, they'll Facebook you. You know, it's funny when people, no, just call my name since that's what you just put me, just tag me in and praise God. <laughs> oh, you gotta love the challenge. Anywho. And so, so he, he's talking trash. He said, so you think we, we, he said, what's more, do you think we have invaded your land without your Lord's direction? He said, your God told me to do this. Yes. Now God got to fight. Because you messing with my name. Yes. You, you mess with my integrity. You mess with my reputation. Now God's got to fight. So, so, so then Eliakim, right, and Shepna and Joah says to, to uh, Rashika, they said, speak to us in Aramaic. Because he was talking to him in their own language. Some of y'all will miss that. He's talking to the Jews. They're speaking in Hebrew. And all the people, this devil was so bold, he's speaking in the Hebrew language so everybody can hear it. And so the elders are saying, don't speak in Hebrew, we don't want the people to hear it. Yeah. Speak in Aramaic because we understand Aramaic. And that devil said, No, we mean to speak this yeah. in Hebrew. Yeah. Listen, let me tell you, you want to speak your language because you want to mess with your faith in God. Yeah. You try to say, Hush, don't say it too loud. And that devil pay pronouncement over a bullhorn. And you know, praise God, if the folk in your circle hear it, they're going to get discouraged. They're going to feel some kind of way. And so you try to say, Hush, devil, don't put that out there like that. And that devil I want your family to hear what I'm saying. I want your, your tiny army to hear what I'm saying. My Lord. Good word. They say, please, verse 26. Please speak to us in Aramaic. Because we understand that. But don't speak in Hebrew. We don't want our people to hear what's happening. 
We know we're under siege. Don't talk about my king like that in front of these people. But Sennacherib's chief of staff said, do you think this message was to you and your master? He said, I want everybody to hear it. He said, for when we put this city under siege, they're going to suffer along with you. He said, they're going to be so hungry and thirsty, they're going to eat their own waste and drink their own urine. That's for those of you that think the devil playing with you. That's for those of you that want to, uh, I'm just going to deal with that bondage tomorrow. That's how the enemy really feels about you. He don't want to just bind you up. He want to bind up everything connected to you. He wants your life to be so torn out and broke down uh, that you don't have nothing, praise God. He want to wear you out, praise God. The way you can't receive nothing from God. But he tried it. He tried it. He tried. Yes, he did. He tried. That's right. Oh, so let me move on. So, 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 so. He said, oh. So 28, verse 28. So then Rashika says out loud. Bible said he shouted this thing. My God, you know you're dealing with a bold one. He shouted. He said, listen to this message from the great king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Don't let Hezekiah deceive you because during this time, now remember this is the second time that Sennacherib is coming against Judah. Yeah. The first time Hezekiah tried to deal with it in his own way. He gave him 11 tons of silver and a ton of gold and he went away for a season, but the devil came back, which is what he, Jesus told us that, right? Yeah. The devil came back, amen. And so this time when the enemy came back, what Hezekiah did, Hezekiah said, hey, let's begin to strengthen the walls because it's about to be war. Oh, yeah. we, we can't fight this battle because that's why I tell you it's a different battle, different strategy. You can't fight the same way the second time. Okay, it didn't work. If it worked, you wouldn't have the second battle. If, it worked, if you were so confident, and if that thing was so, if it, if it was so effective, why are you still dealing with the same devil? So something is wrong. You gotta change your battle plan. You gotta change your weapons. You gotta change your strategy because the first fight went it wasn't that effective because he came back. And so now what Hezekiah does is Hezekiah tells us the men of Judah, he said, build the walls up. He said, matter of fact, build a wall outside of the wall. He said, shut off the water supply. And so what, what, what Sennacherib did, and this is also in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. So what Sennacherib did, he said, I'm going to shut you up. And he said, you shut yourself in, but I'm going to shut you out. He said, I'm going to make you like a bird in a cage. Oh, my God. Oh, this, is Woo. My God. this is your adversary. This is the one who cares nothing about your prosperity, nothing about your health, nothing about nothing that God's going to do in your life. He cares nothing about you. He said, you hide. You're trying to protect yourself from me. He said, but I'm going to shut you up like a bird in a cage. You got to go and read it. That's too much for me to get a day, praise God. So anyway, he says, uh, don't let Hezekiah deceive you. So Hezekiah, when he came, when, when Sennacherib came the second time, Hezekiah put this plan in motion. And Hezekiah said, hey, build the walls. Cut off the water supply. Build the wall outside of the wall. And he said, whatever they say to you, don't respond. And that's why Joel and them didn't want the people to hear it because they didn't want them to respond. See, some time of your battles, some of your battles are going to be won by you being quiet. Yeah. You want to tell a piece of your mind, you ain't got but a piece. You better hold on. All right. You better hold on to that piece. You're going to need that for the next season. And so there's some of your battles, you want to have to fight by being quiet. So here's the guy said, listen, just keep working. Don't respond to them. Just keep building. Don't respond to them. And so that's why the enemy will try to try to listen. That's why he tried to make that message so loud to provoke them. Yes, That's it. Yes. My God. The enemy tried to provoke in Judah to respond when God told him, the guy tell him, don't say a word. Don't you say a word. And so now he's louder. And he's louder. Go tell King Hezekiah. He said, don't let him deceive you. He's not going to rescue you from my power. Don't let him fool you into trusting God by saying the Lord will rescue you. He said, this city will never, by saying the city will never fall. He said, don't listen to Hezekiah. He said, this is what Assyria is offering. Come and make peace with me. Come and make a league with me. Give me some more of your silver and some of your gold. He said, then I'll let you continue to eat from your own grapevines. That's what the enemy wants. He don't want you to step into that next place where God is calling you. And so he'll make an offer to you. Just do this right here. And I'll make sure you never want for nothing. Didn't he do the same thing to Jesus? But you know, if you're, if you're a son of God, I know you're hungry. Because the enemy knows what your needs are. 
But if you so lonely, I got this young gentleman over here, you know, he, he speaking tongues, he real sharp, and uh, he know Hebrew and Greek, and he, he, he know all this stuff, but what you don't know is he's a devil, amen, you didn't know he's a snake out coiled up on the inside, you looking at the shabba baba, and now stop looking at that heart, praise God, and so the enemy will try to present that thing to you that he knows that you want, you got a tiny arm here, don't listen to Hezekiah, why don't you just make me? If you may leave with me, you'll eat some of the best grapes. You'll drink some of the best wine. I'll make sure your children are safe. And all the enemy wants to do is bait you out of a place in God. And the Lord is saying, I told you to be quiet. I told you not to respond. I told you that I'm going to fight this battle. Hold your peace. Oh be still. My God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So this devil is shouting. I want to make sure that you hear what I'm saying. And I'm going to speak it in your language. I'm going to come down your street and knock on your door. You won't miss the fact that this message is for you. He said, don't you listen to Hezekiah when he tries to mislead you. And that's what the devil will do. I always try to get you to take side against God's word. I'm going to get you to compromise he said, don't you listen to what Hezekiah is saying, talking about God's going to rescue you. Verse 33, he said, has any other gods of any other nations saved their people from the king of Assyria? Mm. He said, what about the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Did anybody save them? Wow. What about the gods of Seprevim and Hena and Iva? Did anybody save them? Wow. Did anybody rescue Samaria? He said, has there been any nation ever able to save his power, his people from my power? So what makes you think God is going to save you? Come on. Wow. 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 Don't you see what I did in the family down the street? Jesus. If I did, I did it. What makes what, what makes you so different from your neighbor on the job? Did you see what I did to that marriage? Or what makes your marriage so different? Don't you see what I did to that PK? What makes you think your child is any different? Don't you see what I did to that man's body? What makes you think that your body is any different? Let me tell you something. The enemy try to compare you to somebody else. And going to be somebody great. Look what I did to your mama. She ain't finished her destiny. What about your dad? Look at him. He ain't about to nothing. Look at your sister. Ain't that your family? It sure is. And that's why God is raising me up for such a time as this. I'm going to bust your head and set my people free. You can call me honey. You can call me what you want. But by this time next season, you You will not testify in my house, devil. You will not testify in my finances, devil. You will not testify in my marriage, devil. You will not testify in my business, devil. You will not testify in my ministry. I don't know what happened over next door. I don't know what happened. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I pray for him. But you ain't coming up in here. I don't know what you did to Egypt, and I don't know what you did to Babylon and Pharaoh, why he's, he's a broken stick. I don't know what you did to him, but you're not going to do that yet. I know that's right. You were trying it, though. Yes, Lord. You did try it. Yes, Lord. Didn't work. My God. So, my God. And so the word goes out now, and, and, and again, this is a lot of text. Now, I listen, it's too good that y'all going to have to read it. 2 Kings 18 through 20, 2 Chronicles 32, write it down. And so, <laughs> go back and read it, amen. So, 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 so the word comes to Hezekiah. They bring the report back, which is what the devil wanted. Yeah. You know, folk do stuff, and then once you run back and tell it, well, they told it. All right. They got told. Amen. They told me what you said. 
Baby still I heard what you did. Wow. Now it's time for me to go with God in prayer. Yes. That's right. So Hezekiah. <laughs> so Hezekiah, let me give you the scripture context here. Chapter 19. 2 Kings 19. So it came to pass that Hezekiah heard it. And the Bible says he tore his clothes and he covered himself in sackcloth, which is symbolic of them going into fasting and prayer. Amen. And Elijah came and all of them covered themselves. Amen. And, and Hezekiah said, you know what? I need you to go get me a prophet. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I need to hear from God. Uh -oh. So he says to them in verse 3, Amen. this day, he said, this is what I want you to tell the prophet. This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. Because God, this man didn't just offend me, he offended my God too. He said, this is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy. He said, we are like mothers who are about to give birth and have nobody there to deliver. He said, we don't have strength even to deliver. He said, it may be that the Lord will hear this word and that God will reprove them, which God has heard. He said, I need you to pray with me, man of God. I got, I got something going on in my life that's a little bit above me. It's affecting not just me, but it's affecting people in my circle. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so I need some help. All right. I need somebody who can get in touch with God and, and pull on the heart of God and, and so that God will come in and fight this thing because this is just too wonderful for me. Right. I can't attain it to it. That's right. Right. Amen. And so the word of God says to verse 6, second, uh, night, second uh, Kings 19, 6, Isaiah said to them, tell your master that the Lord said, be not afraid of the words which you have heard. My God. Which the servants of the king of Assyria has blasphemed me. Yes. He said, Behold, I will send a blast, or in other words, I'll put a spirit in him, and he will hear a rumor. And he's going to return. God said, I'm going to put a hook in his nose and draw him back to his own land, and I'm going to kill him in his own house. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Wow. He tried it. So Rabshika returns, amen. He's coming back with another letter. Verse 10. He said, this I want you to speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Now, God already sent his word out, right? Yes. Yes. You already know the wrath of God is coming, so just quit. <laughs> just stop while you're ahead, right? <laughs> no, you steady moving. <laughs> <laughs> he said, thus shall you speak. The, the king of, he said, don't let the God in whom you trust deceive you. <laughs> saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. He said, behold, you heard what we did every place else. <laughs> Again, have the gods delivered them? No. Where's the God of so-and-so? I don't know. Verse 14, Hezekiah receives a second letter. And he read it. And this time Hezekiah said, you know what? I already went to the prophet for a word. He already gave me a word. Now I'm going to God for myself. The Bible says in verse 14, Hezekiah received a letter, went to the house of God, and spread that letter before the Lord. Right. Now this is also during the time when God is saying to Hezekiah, get your house in order. Right. You understand? Now, now you see why Hezekiah cried and God, do you, do you see what's happening? I cannot die right now. My people are in battle. Sometimes God will add some pressure. Yes. My God. Right. To see how serious are you about the destiny of your people. Right. It was easy for Hezekiah said, you know what? This is a bit much. I'm a little bit tired. God, come on and get me. Even Paul said, you know what? He said, I do have a decision. Paul said, you know what? I can go. I can go to my father. He said, but it's more needful for you if I stay. Yes. So Hezekiah really had a choice. Hezekiah could have allowed that sickness. It was a terminal illness. Amen. It was a boil. Amen. God told the prophet put a fig leaf on it and let that thing heal him. So you know what? Stress will make you sick. During this time, Hezekiah became sick from stress. Finished. Hezekiah's works were not finished. 
But that stress. Because remember, he tried to compromise with the enemy. And the devil came back. And now he's got to figure out what in the world has happened. And now he's got a death threat on one side. And he's got a devil on the other side. What you going to do? What are you going to do? Amen. When you're battling what the doctor said. And you know that you got family that's not saving and not delivered. This ain't the time to back up. Well, God, come on. Make up my dying bed. Let me go. Let's just let Susie May and them make it out the best they can. I came up the roof side. I guess they'd be all right. No. God. I cannot Select 
Booty change. Jesus. Bring me the letter. Bring me that student loan. They're talking about taking your check. Come on. You don't work. I gave you the ability to work and, and have things. And now the devil talking about you gonna go to your bring me bring the letter here. Yeah. Bring me bring me that, that child that you done labored and, and prayed and you done fasted and did everything. Bring that child here. Lay him on off. Bring me Isaac. Bring me your Isaac. Bring him here. Lay him before me and cry out. And you lay that thing and you pray. Yes. So I can open your mind. Yes. I can speak to you yes. and tell you what I'm getting ready to do. Yes. Bring it here. You about to leave this world. All your work's undone. I put you here with gifts and abilities, and, and you gonna let this devil? You gonna let Sennacherib? I don't care what he did across town. You belong to me. My God, I listen. I don't know what he did in that marriage, but this marriage right here. You got lupus. God said, bring me the report. Went back, God changed the whole thing. You understand what I'm saying? He tried it though. The devil tried it. Oh, but I ain't done. Y'all sit down, praise God. My God, my God. My God. See, and we listen. You're not gonna take Sennacherib's letters in the 17. Oh, you gonna you gonna That's why I'm telling you to bring it to me. That's why I'm showing you how much the enemy hates your guts. He hates everything about you. He hates everything you birthed out of your natural womb. Everything you birthed out of your spirit. He hates it. Yes. And he's testified about how he destroyed everybody else's stuff. And he tried to include your name on the list. Uh -huh. But my God just took the blood. Yeah. And he smeared my name off of that devil's list. Yeah. My God, he smeared my name off of divorce. Yeah. He smeared my name off of premature death. Yeah. He smeared my name. He called me. Yeah. My God. Blotted yeah. that thing out. Yeah. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh. But he did try. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Mm. So Hezekiah, where am I? Hezekiah brings the letters before the Lord. Where am I, y'all? Where am I? Huh? 14. So thank you. 2 Kings 19, 14. So Hezekiah received the letter, and he read it, and he went up to the house of God, and he spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before God. That's why it's important to be in a place where God can hear your prayer. That's right, man. Amen. And he said, Lord God, you that dwell between the cherubim. In other words, God, I know where you are. Yeah. Jesus. My Lord. God, I don't know where you are. No, I know where you are. Yeah. You are the God, even yeah. you alone of all the kingdoms. I don't care how many empires the Nacre took down. You are even his king. Yes. You made heaven and earth. Now, Lord, bow down your ear and hear, and God, open your eyes and see, and I want you to hear everything the devil said about my life, which you, which have sent him to reproach you. He didn't just talk junk about me, God, but he talking trash about you, too. Uh, you don't say me, we say your name. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, they were talking about you, so if you, if you don't fight for me, at least fight for yourself. He said he didn't just blaspheme and talk about me, he blasphemed you. Okay? And he said, I'm a true he said, uh, the, it is true, he said. That was a lie, but he can tell the truth. Uh -huh. My God. He is a liar, but he can yes. tell yes. the truth. Wow. Yes. That's good. Uh -huh. That's what some of y'all just so amazed. Oh, the prophecy was true. <laughs> <laughs> a false prophet can't tell you accurate prophecy, yes. but it's still false. Yes. A psychic can be on point yes. and be false. Yes. Well, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in my name? You showed in, yes. and you were so you were just accurate, boo -boo. Yes. You can't have a bam, bam. Now depart from me because I never knew you. You don't have no love in your heart. You don't even know me. You just use my name. You've been manufacturing things and stuff. Talk about dust coming down. What dust got to do with my glory? My God, what is going from heaven? Hey Amen. You better know who you are, praise God. I've been mesmerized by all this stuff. Oh, I need mean dust, yeah. What do you think I do with salvation? What do you think I do with salvation? I got asthma. That's so irritating lungs. 
They did tell the truth. Devils can tell the truth. Yes, yes. But they're still a devil. Yes. Right. My God. Hezekiah says, of a truth, Lord, mm -hmm. the kings of Assyria have destroyed uh -huh. the nations and their lands. Mm -hmm. And they have cast their gods into the fire. He said, but they weren't really gods. They were just, you know, idols or what have you. Mm -hmm. He said, now, therefore, Lord, our God, I beg you, save us out of his hand. <laughs> That all the kingdoms of the earth may know yes. that you are the Lord God, yes. even you only. Yes. And let me tell you something. God picked prophet Isaiah up and said, come here. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I want you to go to my servant Hezekiah. Because see, now he's asking me for a blueprint. Uh -huh. Now he's asking me for a battle plan. And the first time Sennacherib came, he's giving him all the stuff out of my house. Yes. Come on. You done gave away all your, I done blessed you with this and you will give this stuff away? Right, 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 right. You got a right to be stressed out. <laughs> you need to be stressed out. But now the second time, see some of you gaining wisdom, you done messed up and jacked some stuff up the first time. Thank God for a second chance. Oh Lord, I messed it up. I messed it up. I messed it up. God, I went off. I told him off. And God, you, you, was, you, you was right there to step in. And I opened up my mouth. And then you backed on up. And now I'm dealing with the effect of me running my mouth when you told me to be quiet. So you know what, God, I gotta bear that. I gotta, I gotta wear that thing, because I did it. I put that jacket on, now I'm gonna have to wear it. Amen. But now when it come at the second time, oh, hold up now. Come on. Fool me once, shame on me. Yes. Fool me twice, shame on, well, how the thing go? Yes. Is that right? Yes. What they say? Yes. I was sick with the Bible. I know that. <laughs> And I didn't understand the first time, and I tried it my own way, and it didn't work. And now this thing is coming back, and it's worse. Because you know when it come back the second time, yes. it don't come back the same way. Oh, no, the first time he wrote one letter. Second time he had two letters. Do you see what I'm saying? The attack intensified the second time. My God. Yes, it did. That's what pays us. Just beat the devil up the first time, so you got to worry about it no more. I got time for you to come back with seven more clean, unclean. I got time for that. All right. <laughs> I got stuff to do. Yes, Lord. So they come back now more intense and with more letters and with more blasphemy the second time because Hezekiah missed it the first time. And so God said, you know what? You're going to mess this up, man. I was going to listen. I was going to destroy him the first time. If you would have came to me, I would have dealt with that thing. I would have embarrassed and acted him so bad. I would have put his tail tucked him between his legs. I would have chased him. You, Because God don't fight right. No. I said, I said, God don't fight right. Now, if you want to fuck the fight, you kind of know, right? The duck, beaver, bob and weave. But you can't do that with God. How do you know where the fist going to come from? <laughs> you don't know. How you gonna You can't even prepare. You just walk in. You don't, you don't know. Yeah, he's on the ground. He fights. He opens up earth. <laughs> he got angels on treetops and stuff. Are you, you can't fight with that. He sent people dreams. You know what I'm saying? Gideon was so scared and God was trying to tell him, you are a mighty man of valor. You ain't got to fight. Well, I'm shaking, I'm scared, shaking. God, turn the fleece, let it be dry, let it be wet. And he went through all these things. And God said, just, can you just believe? I'm going to do this for you. Just chill out. Calm down. I got this. Amen. And they say, no, God said, you know what? You don't work my nerves. Go down. Get out and get out your bed and go down the street. And he let him over here. Amen. The midnight, his devil had a dream. And in the dream, a loaf of bread fell into the camp and God gave him a heart attack. <laughs> a barley loaf and they said can't be that's a Gideon right here just get it and get him like that's me I said yeah that's you <laughs> wow. you understand so God don't fight right he fight with like bread <laughs> now you gonna what you gonna do with that <laughs> you ain't doing that with that my God <laughs> you know so I don't wanna find that side of God so well you know you just don't know oh you don't know and then you listen he may, he may let you live and get your family. Right. You understand? Know so it's just pace best. Just do right. Amen. Right. Just, just do the right, right. thing. Amen. Right. Do it right the first time if you can. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. But so the second time, so, so God had, I'm fully persuaded in my mind that God had a plan to wipe that devil like the first time. Yeah, that's right. You know, because listen, God has put investment inside of you and God, he's protecting you and he's covering you and you carry his spirit. Yeah. So you're married to him, yeah. right? Yeah. You're married yeah. to him. What man will let you just hit his wife? You, you, you. Now, now, we can take this one of two ways. Do you want to go down or do you want to go up and down? I mean, how do you, because you're going down just which you choose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to come up in my house. So now, which way you want me to hit you? Right. <laughs> yeah. And so God, I believe God was going to fight that 
the first time. But here come Hezekiah. Well, I'm just gonna give him some money. You can't pay a devil off. Right. God was like, okay, now you done took all of my stuff. The stuff I done bless you to make your name great and to, to, to I gave you talents and gifts and you done laid that down trying to pacify a devil. Now you broke and sad. Uh-huh. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's some foolishness. My and you still got to deal with you with. Now you broke sad God. Yes. <laughs> my Lord. You gave away your stuff. <laughs> my God. So Hezekiah missed it the first time. But thank God for Jesus. He said, hey, well, I'll let the devil come back again. This time, I guarantee you, you won't take nothing out of the house of God. Next time you go to the house of God, you won't carry that letter. You won't put the hammer down. You won't put the basket down. You won't strip nothing out of the house of God. You won't come and bring that letter and lay before me. So you're wiser the second time around, right? Because you have to take the devil out. So listen, God wants to annihilate this enemy in your life so that you don't have to deal with it no more. Do you understand what I'm saying? God said, listen, I, I, you know, I, I've got so much I want you to do and so much I need you to do and so much I put on inside of you and so many people I want you to reach and so many people I want you to encourage and inspire. Can you please bring me your issue so I can teach you how to deal with it so I can deal with it and then you can go on to the place called next. You understand? I don't want you going through uh, 2017 like this. I don't want you going through 17 stressed out and heavy and, and, and I need you to give a word and you ain't got no word. And I, I, My God. I need you. I need you. Come on, bring that. Let me clean you and get you right so when I release you to 17, you can walk in some power. Some of us are like Lance, got a plug and got a 100 watt bug that you're not plugged in. All the potential in the world, but you're not connected. You're like a light on layaway. Jesus! I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Where you going to get it? A light on layaway. Wow. Where am I? Wow. So, so, so. Oh, no, I'm summoning 20. So Hezekiah prays, right? And so God tells Isaiah, tells the prophet, go take a word to him. And so thus says the Lord God of Israel, this, he said, uh, that which you have prayed, thank God for hearing your prayers. He said, that which you have prayed to me against the Nacarib, I have heard. And let me stop right there. You don't want to be that one that God, somebody got to go to God and say, Lord, they hurt me. Uh-oh. You know, you just don't want to be, you don't want to be that one. Somebody, Lord, you know, she did. You just don't want to be that on that side of the prayer. Right. You know what I'm saying? I pray for you. You're like, okay, what you say? <laughs> <laughs> so he said that which you have prayed to me against Anacharia king of Assyria I heard you he said this is the word that the Lord has spoken this is what the prophet Isaiah is saying to um, Hezekiah now let me I, I, I went back to the New Living Translation because I love the way that they put this and this is in um, I mean, 20, 2 Kings 19 verse uh, 21 New Living Translation and the Lord <clears throat> has spoken this word against him I love this he said, the, the, he says, you know what? The devil writes letters. God said, I can write. Nah. <laughs> I can write too. Yes, right. You want to write a letter? Yeah. Let's do this. Uh-huh. He's talking about a pen pal. Marvin said, God, wake, waking up a pen pal. God said, I can write letters. Nah. Jesus wrote some good letters, didn't he? Revelation. Yes, it is. The letter to the angels of the church, I write. I have this against you. <laughs> Jesus? So, yeah, Jesus writes letters. Amen. So, so the virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. Now, this is what God is saying now. Just a letter to Sennacherib and to Rabshika and to everybody else in the Assyrian camp. He said, you come to mock me, but my people are going to mock you. Now, y'all hear what the Lord is saying for your situation, for your Sennacherib, for your letter. He said, the virgin daughter, this is a young girl. Uh-huh. God, so you call my, my army tiny. Uh-huh. My tiny army is going to mock you. Uh-huh. He said, the virgin daughter of Zion despises you and laughs at you. Uh-huh. He said, even the daughter of Jerusalem will shake her head in derision as you flee. Uh-huh. Who have you been defying and ridiculing? Uh-huh. Against whom did you raise your voice? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Jesus. And at whom did 
did you look at with such haughty eyes? Oh, it was the Holy One of Israel. Oh, he said, by your messages, you have defied the Lord. Yeah, you said, with my many chariots, I've conquered the highest mountain. And yeah, you testified about the remote peaks of Lebanon. But I'm the one who cut down the tall cedars and the fine cypress trees. I'm the one who reached the furthest corner and explored the deepest forest. I dug the wells in foreign lands and refreshed myself in the water. He said, with the sole of my foot, I stopped up the rivers of Egypt. Oh, you know, since you want to testify. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Since you want to testify. Jesus. He said, but have you not heard, verse 25, I decided this thing a long time ago. Oh, God. He said, long ago I planned it, and now I'm making it happen. I Plan for you to crush fortified cities into heaps of rubble. In other words, what the Lord said, Devil, I'm the one that created you. I'm the one put the thought in your crooked mind to do this thing. Because see, I already planned to bless my people, and now you put a hook in your nose to pull you up against them. I did it for my glory. So you testified, but it's actually my testimony. I'm the one that caused this thing. I planned it a long time ago. You cut down a tree, I cut down the highest tree. You to your strongholds, to your Sennacherib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, that's why their people have so little power and they're so frightened and confused. He said, that's why they're weak as grass. It ain't how strong your, your army is. I made them weak so I can show forth my strength. It don't have nothing to do with your, oh, your arrows and your chariots, praise God. I made them weak uh -huh. so I can show them my strength. Yes. He said, yeah, they're weak as grass. And they're easily trampled as tender green shoots. He said, they're like grass sprouting on a housetop and before it can be it's scorched before it can grow lush and tall he said but I know you well uh -huh. Ooh, God. Uh -huh. he said I know where you stay uh -huh. I know when you come uh -huh. and I know when you go uh -huh. I know the way you had even raged against me uh -huh. and because of your raging against me and your arrogance which I heard for myself uh -huh. I will put a hook in your nose uh -huh. and my bit in your mouth and I will make you return by the same road on which you came. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Jesus! Thank you, Lord. So Sennacherib writes letters to Hezekiah. And when, so when Hezekiah brought the letter to God, catch this, then God took a letter to Sennacherib. See, you want God to execute vengeance on your enemies, but you hadn't brought nothing for God to work with. God said, bring me the letter and let me write one for him. Let me tell you something. I'm an author. Honey, let me, you can't put my book down. My God, I will write a letter and I will tell him about the way he stand up. I will tell that devil about the way you lay down. I'll tell that devil how crooked his big toe is. Let me tell you, God knows everything about your enemy. Everything about him. Woo. He said, I'm the one that caused you to come against the fortified city. I did that. That ain't your might. I made them small so you can show yourself to be strong. So I can destroy you. My God, my God. So then, verse 29. Then Isaiah says to Hezekiah, and here's the proof, and I don't want to get, y'all can read it on your own, what have you. And so, we get back to my. So Hezekiah, but the Isaiah gives him the word, amen. And, and Isaiah gives Hezekiah a sign. Now, this is also during a time when God told Hezekiah, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay? Wow. Second Chronicles chapter 32, you read this in 2 Kings chapter 20. All of this is working together. Mm -hmm. So check this out. Check out what God does. And so, 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 and it came to pass, 2 Kings 19, 35. That that night, did it take God long after Hezekiah brought the letter? Somebody better catch this. It's not going to take God long for him to execute judgment on your Sennacherib. He said, bring me the letter. And let me write my own letter. And after I write this letter and it's pronounced in your hearing, then I'm going to step up and execute it. 
35. It came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians 185 thousand Assyrians. Oh my God, my God, my God. Mm -hmm. Now you thought you was going to buy the devil off with your gold and your silver. God said, no, we don't fight like that. Bring me the issue. Humble yourself before me. Wait for the word. Wait for the instructions. That night, when the word was released, and Hezekiah received the word, because verse 34 says, the Lord said, I will defend this city and save it for my own sake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some battles God is about to win in your life, not so much because of you, <laughs> but because he's preserving mm -hmm. a seed. Mm -hmm. He's preserving a work. Mm -hmm. He's preserving a destiny. Mm -hmm. And so he's doing it for his own sake mm -hmm. and for my servant David. He said, I'm doing this for your daddy, boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of you got some prayers laid up. Can I talk? Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you, you listen, you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah oh, Jesus. is paying for it. Yeah. He's paying for the breakthrough of his city. Jesus. Mm -hmm. My Lord. You are paying for the breakthrough yes. of your family. Yes. You're paying for the breakthrough yes. of your generation. Yes. And so the enemy is issuing letters mm -hmm. and letters. And he's trying to stress you out and kill you and cause you to give up your stuff and cause you to compromise. And God said, if you can just bring that thing to me, to me, because I'm fully invested in this. See, God is a lawyer. God said, if you walk with me, I'll walk with you. If you be my friend, I'll be your God. If you be my son, I'll be your daddy. And whatever shows up in your life, as long as you put it in my hands, God said, I will defeat. trying some stuff. Oh, he done wrote some letters. He's been writing letters all year long. He's been writing letters against the people of God from January even up to today. But there's a bonfire in the spirit. Well, there's a bonfire. And let me tell you something. I'm seeing letters being thrown into the fire. Thrown into the fire. And the power of God. And the spirit of God is licking up the letters from Sennacherib. It's setting fire. And it's blazing against the words of the enemy that whispered against you. And the fury of the Lord has stood up on behalf of his people. Because that thing had the nerve to touch your destiny. Now you can talk about me all you want to. But don't touch the work. Don't touch the God in me.
to him. But let me tell you something today. Hey. He put the pin down. Hey. You won't write another letter with my name on it. You won't address another letter in my name. You won't tag my name in your phone book. You won't tag my name in your phone book. Today, you won't put the pin down. And God said, I'm picking up my pen. And when I write your name in the book, only I can take it out. There is no white house. There is no eraser. There ain't even a permanent black marker that can move your name off of something God put your name on. So I'm here listening that correct over. I don't know what you're scheming and dreaming, but that thing stops today. You tried it. Yeah, I see what you did to my auntie. I see what you did on the other side of town, but you tried that. But honey, you don't, you can give no space. There's no room in here for that. You've been shouting, you've been screaming. You want to make sure everybody hear what you what you got to say. And you want to make me be intimidated by your big mouth. But you know how I'm going to say to my mouth shut. They said an empty barrel would make the most noise. And he just a talking, what he going to do? I'm going to do this. You know, when you keep on plotting and planning and watch my God. Watch this Lord. Watch So that night. Because some of us going to get some suddenly breakthrough. Uh -huh. You don't care that that letter, yeah. that letter about to get lost in the mail. Oh, get, God, I thank you. That letter got lost in the mail. That night. Let me tell you how awesome your God is. Since you said I got a tiny army. Because Shana, that's what he said. He said she got a tiny army. Ain't but two people just praying with her. Tiny army. And here you got all of this right here facing you. And you got two prayer warriors. And half of them sleep. Mm -hmm. oh my God. Come on now. Jesus had three. All of them were sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and so the enemy said, you a tiny army. <laughs> Your money is a tiny army. <laughs> Your faith is a tiny army. Your family is a tiny army. <laughs> And he's looking at your stuff in the natural. And he's trying to prophesy his own victory. And God said, let me prophesy to you. Since you say that they have a tiny army, I'm just going to send one angel. Just one. Just one. My God. See, y'all waiting for the heavens to roll back. And for legions and legions to come. God sent them all. Send every angel of God on this side of North Carolina because I'm going through Jesus. That's like you take a gun to kill a roach. You don't need that kind of manpower. You, you try to blow it up. Y'all laughing, but I'm serious. Some of the things we go through, God sent everybody. We pop it up, Lord. Send, and God said, I, I'm just going to send one angel. And that one is going to take down 185,000. My God. One angel. One angel. Since he said you got a tiny army, God said, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll indulge you. I won't even send all of my army. Matter of fact, I won't even send Michael. Come on, God. Come on. Woo. My God. Because the Bible didn't say the word angel or Now, I, and I'm not, I'm not reducing the strength of the angel. What I'm trying to say to you is, for some of what the enemy has been threatening you with, it seems to you like you need all of heaven. Jesus. God said everybody. God said everybody. Help me, Jesus. Help me. Help me, God. And God said, I'm going to send one. And that one angel is going to wipe that thing out. Forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Forever. Hallelujah. Since he said you got a tiny army, I'm going to send a tiny army. Because that's what you, you called it. You came for it. Right? right? You came for my tiny army. Right. So I'm going to give you what you asked for. That's what you want? So I'm going to send you a tiny army. I'm going to send you one angel. And in one night, people will wear your hind parts out. 
And while when you wake up the next morning, old Sennacher with your famous letter writing self, uh -huh. right. over half of your army is going to be dead. Yes. 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 Wow. And so now, what happens, all this is so good. Do y'all think that's it? That ain't it. I told y'all God don't fight, right? <laughs> he was still mad. Yes. He was after killing 185,000 enemies, God was still angry. She said, I ain't even finished. My God. Hope better be careful. My God. God. Jesus. My God. Woo. That's good. What, one of the cadences that our band says is, don't mess with me. All right. Yes. Don't mess with me. That's right. You, you, they are, and I tell my kids, I tell my people this all the time. Listen. Leave folk alone. That's right. If you don't understand it, I'm on. let it go. Because you don't know what you're fighting with. You understand what I'm saying? You don't know what's in that person, even though they may not be walking that thing right now. You see what I'm saying? David understood. He said, listen, Saul is cray cray. Saul is cray cray. But he's still anointed. Yes, Lord. And he had every opportunity to kill him and get him like a fish. But you know what? David said, I cannot touch this anointing. Yes, yes, you understand yes. what I'm saying? So you got to be careful yes. with things mm -hmm. that you see or, or things you hear yes. and you don't have the right understanding to say, oh, let me get the back of yes, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because you may have caught that person in the season of going through. Yes, Lord. But they got a season of coming out. Coming. Yes. Don't get stuck on my going through. Yes. Don't you get stuck there. Because he got from the chapter on you. Yes. And the thing, listen, I might be going through today. You don't know what God's going to do in my midnight. Yes. God turns things in the midnight hour. God turns it for Hezekiah. The same enemy that came against God, against the people of God. God went against them. You don't know what's happening in somebody's midnight. We've been doing for a night, but joy coming. Some of y'all will wake up to some work to Because God's moving in your midnight. Egyptian Pharaoh, they just weeded water, and God didn't even fight for them because he said, they ain't even mind no way. You know what I'm saying? So, so the testimony that the enemy has for that don't mean that's the same testimony for you. They don't belong to God, but I do. Right. See, he's obligated to keep that which I have committed. Right. right? Egypt is not committed. Not during this time. Those beautiful Egyptian saved people today, praise the Lord. But during this time, Egypt represented a pagan power. Uh -huh. So God, God's like, I don't care what you say about Egypt. <laughs> That's not my fight. Right. You understand? Every battle is not your fight. Right. I'm going to help you. No, you sit your stuff down. Right. Praise God. Right. <laughs> you know, use up all your strength fighting somebody else fighting. It's God. Right. It's God fighting them and you jump. Oh, We're going to bind it down. we loosen it. we loosen it. And God said, what is this? Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Angel, go, go get her. <laughs> get him. You know, jump yourself in somebody else's fight and they fighting God. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's good. That's real. I will yes, pray for you. Let me know how it works out. Yes, I'm going to go home and eat popcorn and watch Netflix. Wait on Jesus. So you can't, you know, you can't bond with everybody in their warfare. Because you don't know the details. You don't know what's going on in that warfare. Maybe some generational stuff. They better put their hands on some of God's anointed. You don't know what they've done. And here you are. Come on, we're gonna pray. Two o'clock, five o'clock prayer. Come on, let's get up. And God was like, mm-mm. -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see, you got something coming tomorrow. Yeah. And you so blind fighting this thing, you not even ready. You don't use up all your strength. Jesus. And here come the one beat on your door and you let them in. Jesus. See, be careful. God was not obligated to keep Egypt. God did not fight for Egypt. Pharaoh is a broke down sick, and if you lean on him, he's gonna break over. God said, I hate, well, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but these are my kids. This is my name. This is my legacy. I made an oath to David. I got to keep my word. Yes. And so that's what he did. Oh, so he sent that angel. I'm trying to close y'all, all right? Yeah. He sent that angel in verse uh, 35. Right. One angel. One angel. Smoked 185,000. And listen, when they, when they got up early, all they saw was dead corpses. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, weren't you the same one? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, some things like... Yeah. 
It's quiet now. I mean, you know, you had all that noise. Now it's nothing but uh, uh, quietness in your camp. Silence. So, but this is not it. Because remember I said, God don't fight right. And he's, you know, he, he ain't finished. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, what happens? Let me give you some more context because I had to read the history behind it. So remember what Sennacherib, all the trash he talked about Babylon. Yeah. And in Babylon and Egypt and all that stuff. So he goes and he conquers himself the kingdom. Well, there was this thing, and I don't want to get too deep up because I don't want to lose people, but they had kind of like, you know, whenever nations go to war, there are certain places, that's just like a code of war. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there's some things you just don't do. Right. You know, like you can bomb the military camp or the barracks, but you don't bomb the little children orphanages. Right. Yeah. Even though you're enemies, but there's like a code of respect. You just don't, you don't cross that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You don't hit like the libraries and institutions so that civilization can continue on. Right. right? That's why in the Old Testament, you know, whenever you saw God to kill all the children, everything breathing, God wanted a total end to that people right. because there was weakness in the bloodline. Right. And so God was like, kill them all, don't let nothing breathe. That's why we're so mad with Saul, right? Kill everything. No, he kept the king. If anything, you're going to kill, kill the king. My God, that's the head. You don't leave the head. <laughs> so, uh, so praise God. So, so there's kind of this, this, this code of war that when you're doing battle, you don't touch the kids, you don't touch the women. Right? And you got to... Y'all got to get to the Old Testament to understand. It. That's why David was so hurt. And so the men were so angry they wanted to kill him because they were like, they, 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 they took our wives and children. And in war, you just don't touch the women and children. You don't do that. But what happened with Sennac, when this man was so wicked, right? He went with his bold self. And so he goes and takes down all of Babylon. Everything. And Babylon was kind of like the, the, the Hollywood or the New York City, like the culture Mm -hmm. Capital, right, right. and you just don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You do everything, just don't touch that. Right. So, so his kids, the Assyrians were angry. His own people. Remember what God said? I'm going to put a spirit in you and take you back to your land, and I'm going to defeat you there. Well, here's what God did with Sennacherib. God drew him back home and caused war in his own house. My God, Jesus. He calls war. See, now you release the word of destruction in my house. God said, how about you go home and find that same word? I told y'all, God don't fight right. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, he don't fight right. So now Sennacherib goes home because God's going to put a spirit in you. You want to hear a report. You want to hear a rumor. And you're going to go home. And I'm going to deal with you there. I'm going I'm to I'm beat you in your house. You know, it's street, you know, street stuff. We don't fight in people's house. Come outside, come outside. We do something. That's the number. Come in your house and get you. Man, y'all, come on here. You can't do nothing with the law. What you gonna do with that? <laughs> y'all told me y'all fight it. Yep, that's right. We don't fight in the house. We take it outside. So, so anyway, to make a long story short, not to be late with time, but I want y'all to get this, okay? So, so what happens is, Sennacherib, he, he loses the battle at, uh, 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 with, with Judah, and so he goes and he takes down Babylon. And so now his people are angry. They're like, man, we just, come on, we warriors, but we don't do battle like, we don't fight like that. And so now there becomes a civil conflict in Assyria. Okay, in his own house, there's war. So he's weeping now what he sowed. My God. Oh, but this is going to get so good to you. So listen, listen, listen now, because God is still, God is still mad about this thing. He's still, he's still kind of heated up under the collar just a little bit. So, so just a little bit. So, so, so Sennacherib, God puts this thing in here. Remember, he said, I'm the one leading you to go up against Fortified City. So God causes him to do something stupid. God puts the thought in his mind to do this. Jesus. And then God causes confusion in his own house. So now his whole city, see, that's what I'm saying. He tried to, the devil didn't know what he did when he came against you. He didn't know what he did. He didn't know what he signed up for when he touched your life. Because God's going to fight him to the death. Okay? So he, he, he takes down Babylon, right? And so, so the people hear about it, they upset with him. He's got three sons. Two of his sons sought to kill him. Two of his sons went into the temple as he's worshiping his God. They killed him. God killed Sennacherib by the hand of his own sons. Oh in his temple before his demon God. Mm -hmm. So she won't talk trash about God. Jesus. How about you bow down and just die right there in front of yours? My Lord. My Lord. <laughs> Jesus. That's good. Come on now. Come on. That ain't it. <laughs> that is not the end, I'm telling you. So, so, so the son said he killed the father. So now they're fighting over who's going to be king. They're fighting. And so the young baby boy rises up and said, you know what? He had such 
your heart, the people were still mad. Not in, the first person was mad with Sennacherib because of what he did in Babylon. Now they're mad at his two sons when you should have killed him. So now they're mad at him. So the baby boy said, hey, I ain't do nothing. I was innocent. <laughs> so they said, we're going to make you king. <laughs> so here you have Sennacherib, who breathed all of these threats against the people of God. And he boasted, a big boast. Yes, he did. And he wrote letters like you wouldn't believe what he's going to do to God, people, and God ain't this. As a matter of fact, God the one told me to do this against you. God said, I got you. I got you. I'm going to destroy your army. And then I'm going to turn around and divide your kingdom. I'm going to cause animosity and hell in your house. Kill you by your own kids. And let the baby boy rise and put on nothing about it. And let him take it. People of God, let me tell you something. You serve a God who is like that. He's really like that. That's why I love the Old Testament. I, I love them. I love the words. But the Old Testament teaches you the ways of God. It teaches you the way God thinks. And it teaches you how God moves. It especially for prophets, man. Look, when you, that's, you see the animation on me? I go crazy in Old Testament because you get to see how God thinks and how he moves and how what he thinks about his people and how he fights his enemies and you get to see all of this stuff and you're like, he's my God. Yeah. Yeah. That God is my God. That's my daddy. That's how he fights. That's what he thinks about me. That's what happens when the enemy came, comes up against me. And he may rise against me one way, but he flees seven ways. And when the and when he tried to touch my house or touch my life or things that belong to me, God himself requires me to be in a place of silence. Yeah. See, sometimes God says, listen, I'm going to ordain you into hush ministry. And I will just be quiet. All right, all right. Be quiet. Walk around the wall, Joshua. Don't say nothing. Jesus. <laughs> Don't you say nothing. But I'm going to tell him, I'm going to be quiet. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. Be quiet. My God. Crucify that flesh. Hey, your, your tongue inside your mouth just flapping like, and you're like, no. <laughs> Listen, that's my God told Zachary. He said, you know what? Since you don't know how to talk, how about you just be mute to the baby boy? Just be quiet. Because you can open your mouth and cause God to back up off of your stuff. And you cause yourself to fight that thing longer than God ever intended you to. Some of our people of God are fighting battles that God said, now I could have fought that thing you 12 years ago if you would have just been quiet. And here you are 13, 15 years later. Praise God. Everybody bold and moved on. You still fight that same devil. You got a 12 year old devil that God told you 12 years ago. If you just be quiet, if you just stand still, see my salvation, I'll do it. But no, we got to have something to say. And I, I'm just going to tell my mother. And God said, you know what? I'm, go ahead. Jesus. It's time to burn those letters. Yes, Lord. I'm not going to buckle under your threat. I'm not going to give you nothing that God gave me. I'm not compromising. Amen. But I'm coming to a place. This is what we pray. I'm coming to a place where I'm taking every care and I'm laying it on the altar and I say, God, you do it. You do it. You do it in my kids. You do it in my marriage. You do it in my church. You do it. Every time I put my hands to it, I mess it up and I keep going through this thing over and over. I don't want to be like Hezekiah. I don't want to give the enemy my stuff and think he's going to be on my side and be my friend and come around and I got a devil two times as bad as the one I just had. Anybody got time for that? You don't have time to keep repeating the same wars. You don't have time to keep repeating the same battles. At some point in your life, you will have to turn that thing over to God and say, Lord, give me a word. Give me some strategy how to defeat this devil. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You got to recognize who you are. You got to know who you are. And God said, I'm not just going to do this for me, but I'm going to do this for you. I, I was, and that's why when Hezekiah prayed, he said, God, remember. You see what I'm saying? You got to think, uh, Josika said in her testimony, God, remember what, not that God forgive us. You remind him anyway, praise God. Remember my faithfulness, God. Remember I tore down the pagan altars. Remember, God, I built walls and walls around walls. Remember it, God. And God said, yes, daughter. Yes, I do remember. I do remember your faithfulness. I do remember when you kept worshiping, even though your stuff was jacked up. I do remember you coming to church, even though you were hurt. I do remember you still saying thank you when you got cursed out. I do remember. So you know what, daughter? I'm going to come in and strengthen you, and then I'm going to fight your battle for you. Because you didn't back up and you didn't compromise and you didn't try to move this thing in your own way. So they've been trying some stuff. All year long writing letters. You hear reports after reports. My God, you put the phone down, something come on 
TV. Turn the TV off. It's Facebook. Everywhere you go, it's like some kind of report from the enemy, what he's going to do and what he's planning. And that thing is stressing some of God's people out. They're not able to move in their anointing. They're not able to move in their gifts. Some folk, like I said, got stuff to lay away. You don't prophesy no more. You don't preach no more. You don't pray no more. You ain't got no oil, praise God. And the Lord said, listen, that's why your stuff is overcoming you. That's why your stuff is wearing you out. Because you forgot who I am. You forgot I'm the God that keeps you. You forgot I'm the God that delivers you. You forgot I'm the God who heals you. You forgot. She said, oh, foolish Galatians, who have you with you? What happened that you forgot about the mighty, terrible face of God? He's a loving God, yes. But he's got another side. Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus loves a little children. He sure do. Jesus kills people, too. You understand what I'm saying? You can't get this thing twisted. God loves everybody. Yes, he does. He's also a just judge. And he hates sin. He hates it. Oh, yeah, Especially when you're doing stuff to make somebody's life more difficult yes. than what it already is. Yes. Don't bring me extra. Yes. I, listen, I'm just trying to keep my mind from God. I don't need extra. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And so God is so in tune with who He's called you to be and what He's doing in your life to where these letters now to come up before Him. Yes. God said, I'm seeing letters. I see the letters that the enemy has written about you. Yes. I see how he tried to tack your name onto some stuff and get you involved in some stuff and get you connected to some stuff. But God said, I'm taking your name off of that list. God said, listen, I'm editing that. That's a backspace, backspace, delete, delete, clear. Your name is coming off of that list. But there is a list your name is going on. Your name is going on a list of overcomers. Your, your name is going on a list of those that's been healed. Your name is going on a list of those that's been redeemed by the land. Because some of you say, well, you know, God, I'm happy you did it. God said, yeah, I know you are, but I ain't finished. Because God's going to make sure that thing don't rise back up again. <laughs> so you said, for I seen God move. God said, yeah, I sure did, but I'm still moving. I'm still moving. And see, while, while, while they were in Judah and Hezekiah and they're, and they're talking about what happened with their series, God said, yeah, but you don't even know what I'm doing in this house. My Lord, my Lord. All you see is what's happening around you, but you don't know what I'm doing to that family. You don't know what I'm doing on that job. The folks that listen, my God. The folks that, that, that cause you to lose your job, praise God. Amen. But this you took that promotion that belongs to you. God said, so you know, and you may have the money, but you don't have the peace. And the same seeds you sow, you better get ready. Get ready for your harvest. Because it's going to come back to you. God said, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn how to treat my people. You're going to learn how to entreat my people. You're going to learn. Haman is about to get hung on his own noose. You, 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 you did try it. You did try it. But you're going to get hung on your own. The same trap you set for me. You call me tiny army. God's going to send a tiny army because you called it. You did call it. That's who our God is. That's the God that you're about to see in your 17. The God who fights. And then the God who don't fight right. He said, I'm going to be the God that don't fight right. In your 17. I'm coming for your letters. I'm coming for your Sennacherib and for Rap Shaker and everybody that's attached to him. I'm going to teach people oh, how to entreat my people. You going to learn today. Leave my people alone. That's what I want to say. Leave my people alone. They've been crying. They've been bleeding out of eyes. Their hearts have been broken and split into by some threat, some lie from the enemy. God said, I'm going to come for this. Thank you, God. You sow it, God said, you did this. You sowed it, you're going to reap it. Today is the day to be on the Lord's side. Today is the day to be the Lord's friend. Today is the day to be in the Lord's corner. That's this kind of day. That's this kind of season. So, Father, if we are a Sennacherib, Jesus, because sometimes you can be the cause of some mess. That's right, that's right, that's right. With our Holy Ghost self. That's right. <laughs> we can do some messy things. Yes, we can. Yes, we 
give me some messy face. And you call somebody's heart to be broken. You call, like I told you, you don't want to be on the side of that prayer. Oh Lord, so and so said, so and so. You don't want to be on that side of that prayer. And so that's if you're Sennacherib, today is your day to let it go. Today is your day to get set free in your spirit. Because God is moving by fire. God is paving the way for what he's doing in the next few weeks. Oh, well, it's just a day on the calendar. No, it's not. It's a peculiar time. You can see that by what's happening in our government. There's a changing of the guard. Whether you like it, love it or not, it is what it is. And God said, I'm taking that which is peculiar. I'm taking that which you hadn't even determined in your mind. And I'm going to be God even in that. Oh, if he's present, I'm moving to Africa. God said, you ain't got to go nowhere. You stay right where you at. I'm going to be your God right there in Charlotte. You ain't got to, I'm going to get my pants on, y'all. Don't talk to me on the boat back to Africa. We ain't going nowhere. God is still God. So there's something shifting in the next few weeks to come. And God said, I need my people's hearts to be pure, clean, and ready for this next and this new moment. That's what I'm doing it now. That's why I'm setting my face against those that have broken your heart. I'm teaching the nation how to achieve the body of Christ. I'm teaching the nation how to retreat the anointing. God said, I'm protecting my own. I'm protecting my 